and welcome to this week's episode. I just picked up this 1960s Fender guitar recently, and it's actually a very affordable vintage Fender if you're looking for, you know, maybe your first vintage guitar or an entry level vintage guitar. Uh, this is probably the best bang for your buck, actually, but uh, it was as is, as found, no warranty, no refunds, and completely untested. Never been opened up before, so uh, today the plan is to see if it works, see if the electronics work, probably have to uh, disassemble it, clean it up, and uh, get, get everything functioning, and see if this was a score or not. Uh, so that's the plan for today. Let's check this thing out. This latch still works. So here it is. This is a uh, mid-1960s Fender Duosonic 2, as you'll see on the headstock there. And the most striking color, probably my favorite color combination on uh, vintage Fender is the aged Olympic white that turns really kind of yellow looking with all kinds of checking and play wear going on. And the tortoiseshell pit guard, which is actually a very rare feature on Stratocasters and Jazzmasters uh, of the same time period. But on these guitars, it's actually pretty common. You see a lot of this color and uh, Daphne blue, I believe, and also Dakota red. Uh, but this is my favorite combination for these guitars. And it's a very interesting guitar. It's a student model guitar, uh, but you could get them in a 24 inch scale. And uh, you could also get them with a B width nut, which unfortunately this one has the thinner A width nut, which is about 1.5 inches. Uh, but you could get them with a B width. So um, these, if you can find these guitars with the full size neck on them, I mean, uh, for the money, you just, you can't beat them. Uh, this one specifically, like I said, it's got some issues. It came to me with two strings intact. As you'll see, the frets really are in rough condition. There's a lot of play wear in the fretboard itself. Also, someone in inscribed their name here. I love you, Doug, uh, sign Andrea. And uh, you know, I don't know what uh, would compel you to, to, to scratch your name in someone's guitar, but maybe Doug was, was all about that, I don't know. And the neck on this one is fantastic. All of the finish is played off, and there's even a, a bit of flame on this neck, which uh, you know I think adds to the value of this guitar. It, it makes it a little bit unique, so uh, that's a, a benefit, that's a plus that I was not expecting uh, on this guitar. So let's go ahead and plug it in. Uh, and see if the electronics work, what condition they're in, and then we'll probably have to put it on the bench, open it up, clean everything out, and clean up the frets as well, and then put some strings on it and give it a, a real test. All right, let's see what we got. So these switches are notoriously known for going bad. So yeah, we'll find out, to be honest. I'm not sure how this is gonna go here. It's making a lot of noise, probably a dirty output jack. Pots, pots are dirty. So we can clean out the pots, that's not a big deal. Sounds like the pickups, or at least one pickup is working. Not totally sure how these switches work, so let's see what that does. So that's not looking good. Maybe the bridge pickup is dead. I don't know. There we go. That definitely sounds like a bridge pickup to me. The good thing is I think both the pickups work. The switches are faulty. Maybe we can clean them. The pots sound terrible. So we need to clean those. Uh, so we might as well open this entire thing up and take a look at all the details and the date codes and, and see what we've got going on here. All right, so let's get to it. We'll go ahead and cut these strings. Uh, this bridge on this thing is interesting because these saddles are, they look identical to what would be on a Telecaster for the time period. And it's essentially like a top loader Telecaster bridge. There's no tremolo. Okay, so we might as well take the neck off, check and see if the truss rod's working and see if there is a neck date uh, stamp on the bottom here. 
check it out here and it says 9 April 65 and a so I would assume the 9 means uh, duo sonic and then April of 65 kind of lines up with the L neck plate serial number and then we have a which is the uh, denotes the width at the nut and so that's the smaller neck size but that'll work so let's just uh, take a look and see if this truss rod is freed up. Okay. So there was barely any tension on the truss rod. And uh, let's go ahead and check out and see what's going on under the pit guard. Try to clean out these electronics, especially these switches. We've got our contact cleaner here. This thing has not been removed in a long time, maybe ever. There we go. All right. So this is pretty cool. Let me uh, bring you guys in here and we can check this out. So during this time period, the uh, mid 1960s, uh, the employees at Fender started hand writing the dates on the pickups. This lasted for only a few years. Uh, it's definitely not present on the 1950s uh, pickups. But as you can see, this one here, 526.65, and this one, 527.65. This one has the blue and yellow pickup wiring that they started using. This one has uh, the earlier black and white cloth. Um, but if you look here, this pickup has something written there. I can't quite make that out. Maybe you guys know if that's a name or something. This one is actually really interesting. I don't know what that is. Maybe IA. It's just someone's initials. Uh, there is a famous pickup maker um, named Abigail and she would initial pickups in a similar way, but I don't think that's... I don't know. You guys can look at that and uh, see what you think. Uh, the good news is all of this looks original factory, solder joints, everything, and you see in the cavities here, Fender did these little shielding plates in the bottom. And you can see the original color of the lacquer. Pretty cool. And then over here, let's see if these pots are original. I would assume they are based on how they were functioning. So we do have a 1965 date code, 12th week of 65. And these are 250K pots. Everything here is factory original. We want to clean these pots out. You just use, you know, a contact cleaner and there's a little opening here where you can spray inside of the pot. And, uh, you know, usually you can spray and rotate the pot and clean these out. I'm gonna do the same on this one. Now on these switches here, these are always very difficult to work with and notoriously bad. So uh, I'm just going to spray these down best I can. And again, try to free up any corrosion. That's probably the best that we can do for right now. So let's move on to the neck and uh, clean that up as well. You can see the play wear on this thing and a lot of dirt and buildup going on. So um, just gonna try to clean this thing a little bit first. The next thing you might do is take some steel wool to every fret, mark off these frets. Take a little steel wool, just hit every fret, and you'll see, you'll see how it polishes up really quickly compared to the others. So I'm going to go ahead and take care of that real quick, and then uh, should be ready to string it up and play this thing.
So I actually learned something new today about the uh, Mustang Duosonic switching. The middle position is the off position. And then of course you can turn each pickup on individually or together. And then there is a phase switch so you can flip the phase of each pickup and get some kind of crazy out of phase tones. Um, I don't know if I would ever use that, but at least the option is available to you. Uh, one thing I forgot to mention is that these pickups are essentially vintage Stratocaster pickups. It's the same wire and the same materials used. The only difference is that uh, they, the pickups have flat pole pieces on them. So, And then also they use these, these plastic covers as well. But essentially this guitar sounds like a miniature vintage Stratocaster. So uh, this one's a little tough to play currently with the frets and smaller neck, but uh, I'll do my best to demonstrate the tones of this guitar. pickups together in phase. I like that tone, it's a little quacky, but uh, it sounds really clear and I, I like it. Uh, here's the bridge pickup by itself. Sounds great. Uh, so the last position that I will show you is what I believe is the out of phase position with the pickups. And uh, yeah, I don't know what you would do with this. <laughs> That's a weird one, but uh, at least I got everything working. So uh, a pretty cool guitar for the money. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoy more in-depth, in-detail videos like these today, uh, just the best thing you can do if you wanna support is like the video and drop a comment, share it with anybody that you know might be interested. That's, uh, that's what really helps the most. So appreciate all you guys out there and uh, I'll see you all in next week's episode. Peace.